There's a productivity tool that is greater than all the tools ever invented in the last 10 years. This tool has been around for hundreds of years and best of all, it's still free of charge, comes on all your devices and yet most people are not using it properly. What tool am I talking about? Well, of course, I'm talking about your calendar. And it is such a powerful tool that in this episode, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your calendar so it becomes the driver of your day. It helps you to reduce overwhelm and teaches you the art of saying no. Okay, so biggest problem with calendars is that we're not managing it correctly. We're saying yes to too many things and then we suddenly discover a calendar that looks a lot like this. Now, as you can see in this particular calendar, I've got meetings, I've got focus time, which maybe is something I've picked up from another YouTube video that I've watched and I think, oh, that was a really good idea. I should add that into my calendar. And as you can see down at the bottom there, you've got admin and communication time and all sorts of things. And you just add them into your calendar, but then you don't follow them. You don't do the work. You don't start to say, no, I need to take control of my calendar. And as you can see, with this particular calendar, if we're looking at this particular day here, Tuesday the 16th of January, I mean, it's basically an impossible day. I mean, you've decided at some point, or the person, let's just say with this calendar, has decided at some point that they need to do their two hours of focus time every morning between 10 and 12. Good idea. But then they've allowed themselves to have a meeting with Peter and a meeting with Jenny in that time. So focus time is not working for you. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do focus time every single day. Of course you don't. Maybe because your work involves a lot of meetings, perhaps Tuesday can be dedicated as a meeting day and just discard the focus time. Instead, allow your focus time for say Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. You may have also a regular meeting on a Monday. Maybe that's another time where you have lots of meetings. And again, you wouldn't necessarily have your focus time. So the first thing I would do in this particular case is let's just drop this one. I'm just deleting that particular focus time. That's gone. Now, again, I've still got a problem here because I've got a meeting with Philip Burgundy and yet I'm also supposed to be in a seminar. Now, I have two options here. I can reduce the time of the meeting and say, hey, Phil, can we do a meeting at 9.30 till 10 rather than uh, whatever time this is, 11.30 till 12.30? Or if you genuinely need an hour, then perhaps the only thing you can do is get in touch with Phil and say, look, I'm in a seminar at that time. Can we postpone our meeting to later in the day? That's something you can do. But down here is where I'm seeing a bigger problem. And by the way, this calendar is something I've created just because I see this a lot with many of my coaching clients. So we've got down here a little bit of a problem because in this case, let's just say for the imaginary person, has thought that having an hour for dealing with communications is a good idea. And yet they have a call scheduled with Sian at the same time. Again, something's got to break here. Now, usually in my case, if I'm in a situation where I have a call with Sian and I'm thinking, mm, okay, this cannot be changed, then I'm going to pull my meeting, my communication time to three o'clock. I'm going to bring that to three o'clock. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any of these overlapping meetings. And so I can start looking at my calendar when I'm doing the planning and saying, okay, Tuesday in this particular case is an impossible day. Something's got to break. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is that's not going to happen because I've, these meetings are, have got to be, they've got to be attended to. So let's just delete that now. That suddenly given my morning on Tuesday a lot more breathing room. Um, I've got this planning meeting for Singapore, but it's tentative. It's not actually confirmed yet. Now, I don't know when this is going to happen. Perhaps I'm not in charge of this meeting, but perhaps what the best thing I can do is reach out to the organizer and say, look, I don't have three hours this week. I have perhaps two and a half hours on Monday, I may have uh, an hour, maybe an hour and a half or so 
on Thursday, but three hours I'm not going to be able to find this week. Now, again, this means that you've got to do the hard stuff. You've actually got to reach out to people and say, look, my calendar is full this week. It's not going to happen. But this is one of the critical things that you want to be doing. Now, what I often find here is, and let's just go to this Tuesday meet to Tuesday, is if I just bring up the, uh, let's just bring up to do, I often find that people will end up with days like this. And they've just got tons and tons of tasks to do as well. Well, if we look at that and we, let's just say, because I know this is the 9th, but this is the 16th, I've got a day like this and I've got a task manager like this, I'm screwed. My day is completely destroyed before it even starts. We have to get realistic. Now, let's just go back to my, <clears throat> a day that I've actually organized as it should be. I need my focus time because that's when I can get a lot of those tasks done. I also need my communication and admin time. Again, I'm going to get a lot of those tasks completed in that time because they can be categorized as admin or communication. Uh, my, my exercise, the blue here is my personal life. My exercise time, you know, is non-negotiable. And we have a big problem here because imagine that Nikki is your daughter or my daughter and I have to pick her up at 3.30, and yet I've got a tentative meeting with Willard White, I've got my communication time and admin time. I mean, the day is just destroyed. I've got to sort of put my foot down and say, what is the most important thing here? In this case, picking my daughter up from school, unless I can arrange with my wife for her to pick it up, pick her up, it up, oops. Um, so this is what I see. I see a lot of actual calendars that look like this. You know, we often say that exercise is a non-negotiable part of my life, and yet we allow a meeting with New York to happen at the same time. Uh-uh, no. Obviously, something has to change. You have to start getting a lot tougher by being able to say no. Now, no does not mean that you go, no, no, no. All it means is saying, look, I can't meet at that time. Can we arrange another time? Now, in this particular case, the call with the New York office could happen on Thursday, which case it doesn't affect your exercise time. So you could move that over to Thursday. Just get that in the right time. And now I've suddenly been able to get this meeting up. Now, you can look at this as a little bit of a game. Where can I fit these things in so that... I can get days like Friday, which seem to be all nicely compartmentalized and working very well. Now, how do you set up your calendar? Well, I'm gonna take you into the following week. This is how I would always recommend people to set their calendar up. Now, of course, you can arrange these in whatever time place you want. I just find that most people are better more creative and more able to focus better in the morning. Now, that might not be possible for you. You may have meetings regularly in the morning, in the morning, in the morning. However, I would suggest that you try and shift meetings to the afternoon because your brain is better able to interact with people rather than trying to do it in the morning when you are going to be much more creative and much more focused. It's just something that I've learned. I would always start the week like this. I would basically start a week with a weekly template. I know in this particular case now, I've got 10 hours for deep, undisturbed focus work. I can work on projects, I can work on proposals, I can work on new sales campaigns. Whatever job you do, this gives you the two hours that you can actually get on and work on the work that often gets neglected because we're allowing ourselves open to meetings. Now, in this case, you probably, most people on average need about an hour to manage their communications. Now, if you, the secret here is, if you spend one hour a day managing your email and messages at the same time, first of all, you become consistent and people learn your patterns. And secondly, you will avoid that disastrous zone called overwhelm and just, just crazy out of control inboxes. It's an hour a day. Email's not going away anytime soon. Maybe you're getting a lot of messages through Teams or, or Slack or somewhere like that. Very similar to email. It's not going away. You're still going to get it. So try and slow things down. Make sure you've got a set time each day for communications. Now for email heavy 
jobs where you've got to you've got to respond to emails quickly it may be worthwhile moving that say to just after lunch or just before lunch you can do that no problem at all that might be the best time for you i find for me the best time is later in the day around about four o'clock and then you need an hour for admin now admin can be the catch all you know if you go back to the my let's just go back to the to-do list uh, my day form to do here you've got most of these like sort payroll glitches that might be just a five minute job do it in the admin service due for car what does that mean well it means i need to call the service center well again if you look at the time of this it's probably enough time to catch the service center before they close to book your car in uh, clear actionable emails well that's already in there plan out new calendar project that might be something you're doing in your focus time so but all of these here is are probably going to fall into either your focus time or the admin time or communication time. So these tasks get done. But as I say, if you go back to that Tuesday where you've got meetings and meetings, these are not going to get done. They're just going to become overdue. The driver of your day should always be the calendar. But I would always say start with a template like this. This will help you to say, right, this is how much time I have for meetings. It also gives you the confidence to ask people, well, can you do a meeting at 9 a.m. on Tuesday? Because you've got three, you've got Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday available for an hour's meeting before your focus time. After 12 till four o'clock, you've got time for meetings. These are just great times to have meetings if you need them. But I tell you what, if you do this, if you set this up as a template, of course, you need to change the times around so it suits your working style, but you will no longer have all that overwhelm building up. You'll no longer have all that email backlog. You know, you will be on top of your work, but the key is to make sure you don't allow your week to end up looking like this. You need to take control. I know it's very hard to say no to very important clients very imp and your boss, but sometime at some place you've got to get a grip of this and it is on you. All of this is choice. If you've got a calendar that looks like this, you've obviously said yes. Now you've put tentative on these, but if when you got the invite why did you put tentative because these meetings clearly must be important this is a, a no I cannot attend it now you've just added yourself another task the more you say no the more space you're going to have to do better work and be more productive I know it's very very hard I've spent 30 years particularly when I was working in the workforce basically learning how to say no to different types of people but you know what I've discovered is most people are very accommodating to your way of doing work particularly if you're producing results so you don't need more and more applications you don't need AI to manage your day for you why would you want that you are not a robot you are a human being take control make the difficult choices have the difficult conversations doing that i can promise you you will start to get more control of your time and your days are going to look more and more like the friday here where everything's under control you've got plenty of flexibility within your day for any emergencies and you've got time to deal with your email and messages and admin job done Thanks for watching this video and before you go I would just like to say if you want to learn more about my productivity tools and the way I use them then this video here will give you a pretty good idea of how I do it.